Hello, Amy. Hello, Karen. And hello, everybody else out there. Um, and welcome to this session of the Canadian Women's Brass Collective um, online projects. So uh, my name is Amy Horvey. I'm in Montreal, Quebec. And with us today is also Karen Donnelly from Ottawa. And moderating, we have Louise Heyerhoff in Toronto. So this is a relatively informal discussion where we're just going to geek out about warm up related content routine. Uh, we're all trumpet players on this uh, call here. So we're going to focus on trumpet stuff. But I think the content should be hopefully applicable to many other brass players and musicians out there. So feel free to uh, if you have any questions or comments or things you'd like us to talk about problems you want us to solve just write it into the chat and we'll do our best to address anything uh, that people would like to talk about in this hour that we have together today um okay cool so a bit about myself uh like i said i'm in montreal and i play with the montreal symphony orchestra i'm in an interim position i played with them for about eight years and i also play a lot of new music and contemporary music and also Baroque music, a Baroque trumpet. So Montreal is a great city for that kind of diversity of, of work and inspiration. Uh, Karen Donnelly is the principal trumpet of the National Arts Center Orchestra in Ottawa, our nation's capital. And she's a legend. She's also a fantastic soloist and chamber musician and teacher. So I'm super excited for this opportunity to pick your brain today, Karen, about all things warm up related. Same um, oh yeah, let's get at it then. Um, let's start. Anything you want to say off the top, or shall I just? Well, well, you know, uh, well, it's just wonderful to be here, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you do. I personally find it fascinating to learn what other trumpet players do. Uh, as as a as a warm up as a and and many people don't even call it warm up as a, as their first practice session. What is it in their routine? Do they have a routine? What do they do to get things going? You know, mm -hmm. uh, we all know that some days we start and it just is super easy and everything's working, and other days it's not so easy. And I love to learn new strategies um on on how to manage that. I personally like I, I I you know I've I've been doing the same job here uh, for 25 years, and so I've had a lot of sort of chapters of of the job and chapters of understanding what works and what doesn't work. And for a long time, I did the same routine. I did the absolute same same order, same stuff. And I found, it took me uh, sadly way too many years that I care to acknowledge, but I found that that wasn't good because you know what happened? Like back in those days, like the phone would ring or the dog would throw up or, you know, someone would ring the doorbell and you got to, and then so pretty much you've basically done your buzzing or whatever you start and then you've abandoned the rest of your routine. Um, or your session because something came up. And then I found that for a long time, that would seem to be happening, you know, and life happens, right? And I was not getting to the things that I needed to practice early enough. And I was practicing the things I, I kind of do well, it makes me feel good. I mean, I like to start with things that are easy and get me going in a good positive way. But once I get into that, like within, and maybe, uh, do you wanna jump right into my routine, Amy, or? Absolutely. Like I, Let's do it. Yeah, maybe Louise wants to share. I prepared a document that just for today that and it's it's just a snapshot. It's just a little bit of a of a look. And the thing I was going to say is I do now lately, I switch it up. I kind of change what I'm practicing kind of with the seasons or with like it, it just like I, a variety seems good for me. It keeps me in it. It keep, keeps me, you know, as opposed to like doing my first session and kind of being not thinking about it, not being mindful, not being kind of focused on what are my goals? What am I trying to do? So, um, well, can I ask, like, how do you know it's time to switch your warm up? Like, how do you know it's time to make a change? 
you know, I kind of just go with like what feels good. Like if I'm getting a little bored of that one sort of pattern or the one sort of exercise, there, I also listed at the bottom of this thing, like several books that I use. I mean, and I just cycle through them. I don't, sometimes I, I can isolate. It can be repertoire driven. Of course, you know, if I'm, if I know I'm playing the Ravel Piano Concerto, for example, thanks Louise. Um, you know, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a lot of like single tongue exercises that will complement that repertoire I seem, seem to be working on. Complement, but also contrast. Because if you're only doing, it's sort of like if you're only eating carbs and you're not eating vegetables, you know, you're not having a healthy diet. It's exactly the same thing. So you want to just look here, go back to the top, Louise, if you don't mind. Thank you. So I listed, these are the things... I love the yeah. falling in love with your warm up. It's to acknowledge that it's Valentine's Day. Yes, yes we are. Our, I'm, that's beautiful. This loving approach to 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 music making. Yeah. So there, there's the there's my. These are the apps I use regularly. Okay. I so and this is just a a general. I mean, I like that Seconds Pro app that I learned about through. Uh, from Tom Hooten online. Tom hey, has like amazing resources online. Yeah. And uh, I like it because the time, and I use it every single session because it reminds me to stop practicing because I can get carried away with it, you know, and get kind of lost in it. And then all of a sudden, I it, back when I was working, I guess it's not so bad right now, but back when I had to go to work, I'd be like, oh my God, I've just been playing nonstop for 45 minutes or something. And I have a concert tonight. What have I done? Yeah. I used to do that so often. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. so the the timer reminds me to stop, take the thing off my face, but then it also reminds me to get back on it. Mm -hmm. So see how I, and I, I also use the rest, you know, I mean, lots of great players think we should rest as long as we practice, but I rest basically about a half. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not a, like, I'm not super strict with it, I but I use it as a guide. Yeah. But I to use the the rest period as as productive activity, you know. Yeah, like I do. Like Louise just led us in those amazing stretches, so I'm going to incorporate some of those into the stretches. And I use breathing tools. You know, I like to use the a, 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 you know just a you, for, through various patterns in four, out four, in three, out three. You know, whatever. Uh, I was ask, I was, yeah. yeah, so I was going to ask you, what are some of your favorite um, breathing devices? Like, oh, the well, exact what, you're, what you're bringing up here. Like, I know okay. you like the yeah. bag. Get the bag. Yeah, I, I this is this is right at the ready. This is ev almost every single rest. I just do a little. <sighs> You know, just to remind me, oh yeah, full. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Pull air in, easy air out. You know, mm -hmm. I that's always at the ready for me. Um I, I this is a simple just tube that I bought at Canadian Tire and I cut and it's like really awesome. Just I have it in my case when I used to have to use my case. I remember that when we used to use case. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um but so things that like people, many trumpet players know what these things are, but like flap lips, you know, like tap. This is, I got this from my trainer. I tap, tap, tap on my face. You know, I make sure my hands are clean, of course, but it stimulates, for me, it stimulates like attention, awareness, blood flow. You know, I just lightly tap and then it's like, oh yeah, right. I'm supposed to be thinking about waking that up, you know, loose, and then free buzz. I used to start with a drone and like be sort of strict on on what note to start on. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking. Anyway, um, you, you you don't coordinate your 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 warm up with your with your dog with your dog bark. Sometimes she comes to join in. Yeah. <laughs> how old does she howl along with you? It's two years now. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, how do you start? Um, yeah, how do I start? Um, I like to, 
um, I usually do some kind of like a little bit of a air pattern. I don't necessarily use the bag um, or anything, but I do uh, just like some, you know, I was lucky enough to get to study with Vincent Chikowitz through the National Youth Orchestra. Yeah. And so I do flow like just basic, like, you know, this like, yeah, just get yeah. some like reminding myself how, how yeah. expanded I can be opening that up and just kind of get it, get that flowing. And then um, I use the piano a lot. I've got it here by me. You know, I use it, I use it a lot for, for basic buzzing patterns to feel, to feel, um, like you said, like you use a drone. Like, so sometimes yeah. I'll use the piano, like just put the, put the sustain pedal on and get some nice awesome. low resonance and just play in the, the overtone series, you know? Um, uh, and then, yeah, basically I get right into buzzing. So, I mean, I, I, I guess I go back to air patterns and stuff. If I, if I feel like I'm needing it, if I'm feeling tension, um, yeah. So, but I don't use a timer. Like, uh -huh. I don't use a timer in my warm up. I should try it, I suppose, so that I could have a constructive response because I feel like I kind of like a little bit of uh, flexibility or like, you know, maybe I'm too lazy, but I like to have a, a be, I like to have kind of a relaxed because sometimes I need to spend much longer on like initial responses or something. If I do that only for, a certain allocated amount of time, it might not be enough. I find like I need my warm up to be pretty flexible, depending. Like like you said, now that we're not performing, my chops just feel pretty good all the time. But if <laughs> yeah. but I used to have you know chops that were tired, and um and then I would need to spend more time in my warm up, right? So oh for sure. Um, so yeah, so I don't really use a timer in that way. But I do often record all the parts of my warm up just on my phone, like just the video, the video. And then I listen back through my like a Bose speaker that's got really good sound. And I find it's a it's super simple and then and it's great. So I play like a basic pattern. We can we can get into it later. We can show you some of my warm up. I think I've submitted that to Louise, but you don't have to put it up right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll record. And then um, that time I take immediately to listen back is that kind of built-in rest as much as you play. That's fantastic. So I find like do the pattern for a minute or whatever, and then listen back for a minute and, you know, make whatever adjustments or, you know, needs to happen. And then, and then that's fantastic. I find like, I really, really like recording my warm up. you know, it's like, yeah. Anyway, it's really, it's so informative because you hear stuff differently than than you do um, when you're playing, right? I feel like I'm too easy on myself if I just, if I don't listen back. I often think that I sound a lot better than I really do, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Many people yeah. I think would say the opposite. <laughs> no. I you know, but I do think I understand what you're saying. I, I, I am, I record myself a lot as well. And, uh, much more, uh, now that I'm doing this hundred days of practice and I'm, you know, yeah. committed to that and on Instagram and, and I'm, I, it was, I did it last year cause I was kind of in a down, you know, and, uh, I needed a boost and it gave me like super focus. It, you know, it gave mm -hmm. me this sense of, of purpose and like, and then I learned so much getting that feedback, as you're saying, getting that feedback of like, wow, that, that I didn't realize I was backing up from my air at that point. I thought I was falling through, or I didn't realize that doesn't sound clean, or I didn't realize that was so loud at that point, you know, this kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, totally. Okay. So what do you do next after? Well, um, so I, I don't want to suggest that I'm like super militant about, uh, about like this, my routine, like my schedule. I just like it. Like it's a general, like if I, you know, if I'm feeling it and definitely I don't move on unless I feel like I've got a good response, like for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, I, mm -hmm. I have this cutaway like Ron Parch in Toronto, magical genius, yeah, yeah. a repair guy. Uh, he did, this yeah. is my mouthpiece and he did a cutaway. So I like to do like just starts with that, you know, and I, I, I also do, I also used to use a drone buzzing quite a bit, but lately I've been just like, just let it happen. Just let the note happen, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm pretty strict with a lot of other things. So and I just like kind of gliss around. Sometimes I play tunes and then I like to get into like, oh yeah, I do generally, I try to remind myself to buzz softly. I don't, I want to keep like the aperture sort of uh, connected, you know, like mm -hmm. not too open. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I always do a little bit of lead pipe. I find this extra little bit of, of resistance offered by the, by, by the lead pipe really helps um, getting um, a natural start, just an easy start. So I, I saw this on a Phil Smith uh, YouTube masterclass. So, you know, whatever Phil Smith does, I do. So that's just how I, that's just how I roll, you know. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, whatever Tom Hooten does, I do. Whatever Phil Smith does, I do. Okay. Okay. So, good. Good. Good advice. So you just take a breath and just on a who, and you just get the air going. And as soon as I add the lead pipe, that extra little resistance starts the buzz. And then there's no, I'm not changing anything with my blowing. And then I just okay. Then it starts just easy. It's just starting with air. And I try and smooth out the, the bumps or whatever. Again, I try and remember to not play too loud. If I'm feeling like I'm maybe using a bit too much pushing and I want to get a little more support uh, with this here, then I'll just do a quick, um, if you can see my, make sure it's in the thing. I'll do a little quick um, block buzz with the lead pipe. And, and what is that you see? Well, it, it, I just blow gently and it allows me to sort of isolate the corners. You know? Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, right. I get it. Yeah. There's a question about using a visualizer, you know, with the wand and a mouth a mouthpiece that's cut out. I, I do like the mouth. I have a visualizer as well, and it works. It does. But I do like that it goes in my horn, you know? So that and uh, the visualizer has, has a wand and just, you know, so it's not to... Uh, both are great. Can you show again the beginning of, of when you put the mouthpiece in the lead pipe? Oh. You said the lead pipe is starting the buzz, so you're not I'm buzzing. not adjusting anything. I'm not adjusting anything. I'm just blowing, you know? Yeah. So, you know. Um, yeah, I don't change anything. Just that I'm blowing air. And I just add the lead pipe and the buzz starts. Right. For me, it's very natural. It's er, like, it's very, it's very, some days it doesn't start. Some days I'm like, oh, okay. And that's when I know, okay, things are maybe stiff or beat up and I have to like make, maybe like take a little more time. Yeah. So, yeah. So what do, you, what do you, what do you do when you're, um, when it is feeling stiff, you know? When yeah. Isn't optimum. What, what, what approach, what, how do you change your, well, your, your warm up? Guys, can I jump in for, for a quick question here? Yeah. Uh, we have a question uh, from Charlotte wondering if there's a difference between a visual, uh, is there a big difference between a visualizer and a mouthpiece with a cutout? Um, yeah, so the, the, the visualizer has a wand and the mouth and, and the mouthpiece cutaway is goes in the horn. So I like the idea of like, it's a direct message, messaging. I'm holding, I put the visualizer in the horn. I mean, the, the cutaway or whatever in the horn and away you go, you know, it's it's all kind of the same sensory thing of like, I'm blowing like this, this is what's happening. But a visualizer is fine too. Thank you, Louise. Yeah. Sorry, can, you were talking about being 
tight, I think. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Having a tough morning and how you get yeah. how you recover. Well, you know, so every, what works for one person isn't going to work for everybody. But there are a few key things that I use, and I'm very happy to share, like that I do. Mm. Number one, it's like we're athletes, right? These are muscles, and if we've killed, we've like on the face like it's sort of like you know playing 10 games of basketball in one day you know mm -hmm. so the best thing for muscles to recover is sleep is rest mm -hmm. so if it's a really severe thing it's a, if it's a really severe and really intense no smiling like actually you know this like that works out like you can just smile on the inside <coughs> and 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 try to not to do too much talking just watch a movie and try to keep the face relaxed i do a lot of stretching you know opposite action right if i'm tired i ice i use an like some kind of anti-inflammatory with food like i take advil with food and i drink a lot of water i drink much more water than you think i like if i'm struggling i will be sure to drink one glass of water on the hour every hour Hmm. Interesting. If it's a, if it's a bad day, I mean, then I, you know, then I hopefully can make it, if I'm working, then I hopefully can make it to the break. Woo all that water, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you it's know, rough. It's rough. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but I find those simple, simple and very logical things, uh, are a really good step in the, in the right direction. The other thing I do is a lot of low Clarks. And from Caruso, like the super soft, like whisper low F sharp, like almost no sound, you know? Mm -hmm. Like fuzzy, almost like just, a, and I just hold that. I hold that. I hold that just calm, calm, you know, uh, quiet, quiet. And don't worry if it's not stable. Don't worry if it's not just like, think about like easy, relax and bring, try and bring the lips forward and more sensitive at the aperture. What do you do? Um, I know, I mean, I usually know the night before, right? That yeah. next day, I'm going to pay for what I just did. Absolutely. 100%. So I try to give myself a lot of extra time the next morning. Like, um, I would give myself a good like hour for like a fundamental basic. You know what I mean? Like, so that yeah. I play and then I rest, you know, I buzz, no sound comes out or whatever. And then I just wait, you know, like I'm, 30 seconds or something. That's the hard part is the psychological, just wanting to be there, just wanting yeah. it. To I got to fix it. Yeah. I gotta, yeah. And feeling like you have to do something in order to fix it. When for me, I, I just find that if I am super patient and slow in my warm up, I will get there. You know, I may, mm -hmm. may not feel spectacular by the time I get there, but it'll, it'll I'll get it back, you know? Yeah. Um, but that I just have to really, uh, allocate a lot of time and um, it's a little weird that i keep popping in and out no i like it welcome we like you okay uh, i was wondering is there anything that you do if you've if you've had a like a big night do you do something after the big show to like to help you so that the next day is not as stiff is there anything so I do a warm down you do? like quiet yeah, soft warm, yeah. I, do, I love I'm, I'm into double pedals now love pedals mm -hmm. and uh soft clarks and this low super soft low and like i, I would like on facebook you know social media is my new mentor for trumpet because <laughs> i follow tom hooten and all these amazing players you know posting content through the pandemic i mean through this time we're all at home and all these incredible there's incredible resources online so so many lead players do the low f sharp thing and i'd forgotten i actually learned that from lori frank you know I'd forgotten that oh yeah right i used to do that and they do it for like a long time you just easy easy rest calm but the whole focus is trying to bring because we we the chops are blown out we try to bring them back together mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Ken McDonald's is, Ken, sorry, excuse me. Ken McDonald is saying Lucinda Lewis has a great resource called Broken Embouchures that has great recovery ideas. I'm not familiar with that. Cool. Yeah, I have that book right here. And Amy Christmas says play the banjo. <laughs> well, Chris Smith, if he wants to have banjo tips, he can call me for a lesson. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rob Weymouth is asking for clarification on the low F sharp thing. I think oh, that's it's, the low F sharp Clark that you were just demonstrating, right? It's just a, like, actually, it's just a long tone low, oh, like okay. low Clark, low soft Clarks. And, and from, from Lori Frank, it's, it, I think it's in the Caruso uh, routine of like very soft low F sharp, like almost like it's almost not speaking. And you hold it for just a long time, you know? When I try to find where it's not going to come and hover around there, you know, you know, that's, like, a and I just do that again and again. And it makes me, hmm. even now I feel tingly. It makes me feel like, oh yeah, okay. That's going to, that's going to help. That's a great exercise to do all the time, irregardless. You know, I, 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 I learned that um, from Marco Blau. You know, a lot of contemporary music requires oh, yeah. niente mm -hmm. a note. Um, so yeah, to be able to sneak into notes and, well, you know, positively with a, you know, sneak into notes and sneak out of notes. Um, yeah, is a great musical skill to have uh, along yeah. with physiological trumpet skill. Yeah. yeah. Do you do that on any note or? The sneak um, in, sneak yeah. out. Be able to practice on any note. Obviously, the higher, the harder. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, within reason. Yeah. 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 Um, do you want to get back to the the? We're at the halfway point. I kind of want to talk about my little my little strengthening things that I do when I in the rest, like when my timer tells me to stop, and then I. So I, I listed it in the on my sheet, which you can download uh, from our website. But I do like similar like Louise, but I'm just gonna back up here. Hope you can still hear me. Like A's, T's, and Y's. I learned it from my trainer, my awesome trainer. So I just bend over slightly, and shoulders down comfortably down, and 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 then I just take my arms. Don't lift your shoulders. I just take my. You can't really see me. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> you know up to uh, one o'clock and, and 11 o'clock or two and 10, that's an A, and then I, then I bring it back down. And I do that 10 times. Light bend in the knees. And I think, cause I'm thinking about stretch, uh, strengthening between the, my mid back. And I do, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a Y. And then I do the T's, I bend over slightly, get my posture set, just like Louise said in the, in the yoga class, and I go out, up, Squeeze the mid back, squeeze between the shoulder blades, you know? Squeeze between, <sighs> exhale. It, it engages there and I feel like, cause I, you know, I, we all roll forward playing trumpet and we need to like strengthen to chin down and back and chest high and we need to strengthen in between the shoulder blades for mm -hmm. being strong and well, we all, I should say, I do. That's, so that's what I do and I love it. I love it. And it sort of keeps me. And then I feel like, okay, phew. and then it's time to go back. And then I do the, what's, what's sort of next on my list. So you do that intermittently yeah. during rest periods. Yeah. In the rest period, I just like, I'll do one, do one of those things. I always go back to the bag, little thing uh, in and out, you know, uh, with the bag. And then I'm, so that gets me relaxed. And then I do a little strengthening it feel, and, I, and it feels solid and stable. Yeah. And then then it's basically time to kind of come back to the next exercise, uh, which is, you know, sound, some kind of sound, long tone thing I do. I included the from the Mike Sachs so warm up uh, routine book, which is a fantastic book. Absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. In the uh, I prepared a PDF of just materials. You know, it's just a snapshot of a few things that I use. Here it you is. Know, Thanks, Louise. Yeah. One of the things I really like about his book, which also came recommended to me from Andrew McCandless, 
when I was speaking with Andrew, um, is the, that he has those different uh, warm-ups, depending on how much time you have. Yeah. And it's the first time I, I saw anybody sort of acknowledge that in writing. Because, um, uh, yeah, often you have less, maybe you have two minutes, maybe you have five minutes, maybe you got 20 minutes, you know, maybe you got an hour. But to see what somebody like Mike Sachs would prioritize in that time is super interesting. And you know what? The, the opening of my my warm up also includes these the mid range sax intervals. Well, well, I mean, you know, pretty. It's, it's so smart. Yeah, and I love the bending. Do you do anyway. them at sixty? Do you do them that slowly? Uh, you know what? I I don't. Uh, it, then because it it does take a. It does take me too long to get through it. Sometimes I just do one line. Lately, yeah. I must admit, I've been, I'm very into stamp. I'm trying to, it's another thing, this pandemic and all these amazing trumpet players putting content online that, that seem to be a thread of common. Uh, mm -hmm. Exposure to these incredible players, many, many, many of them do stamp. All ranges of, of all styles too. Like, not just I'm an orchestral player, but like all styles of trumpet players do stamp, you know? So I was like, okay, I better, I've, I've owned that book for 25, 30 years and I better explore this. So I, I've been digging in pretty, pretty solid into the stamp book. So that's where I, I, I like to do pe pedals and, and also the, the T-Bow book also as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like where I, I do double, like double pedal if I want to do get, I don't know. It's just I'm not good at it yet, but I'm 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 trying. So, yeah, um, yeah. So, um, I see. I can see Larry Larson. Hi, Larry. Asked a question about Barb. Like Barbara. Oh yeah, the bar. So at the top of my page, uh, it does say yeah. Uh, the this is just a guide. Okay, this is just something that I do. I attended a master class that Barbara Butler gave, and she suggested we make a list of 20. You, your number number one is what you think you do the best. Number two is your next best, three, four, and then you get down, number 20 is basically what you're weakest at. And so she said, we should be doing those things that are in the bottom range, 17 through 20, every single day, every day. Hit those things you are weaker at, so you're paying attention to them. And then the mid-range things, kind of every other day, and the things we do really well, you know, every other day or, you know. Mm -hmm. I usually start with, like, something that gets me going, like a nice long tone thing. Um, but, uh, but so that's why, for me, ever since she told me that I made my list and that's why for me very, very early, like within, it says here within the first half hour, I get to Clark number one. I do that every day. I do it single tongue, double tongue, triple tongue. And I do it two like alternating kind of like the slower version of Clark one and then the faster version of Clark one. And then when I do it faster, I don't do single tongue cause then I can't keep up, you know? So, but, um, so, and then if I find one I'm tripping over, like I often trip over this one. The one that starts on E flat, I'll do it with my left hand. It's another thing I learned on social media, the internet, my new trumpet mentor. Left hand. And then for whatever, I know, weird, huh? That was good. Uh, you should have heard me one year ago when I first learned about it and it was terrible, but yeah. And then for whatever reason, and wow. they, it was advice. Like if there's a hard lick you're working on in your concerto or your solo or whatever, try, isolate the part that's not clean and do that with your left hand. And it, it's, it, I don't know. I, I don't know why, but it works. I don't understand why, but it, it, it works. <laughs> So it must have something to do with the how your brain works and and yeah and yeah. you know and ingraining yeah. that message. That's fascinating. Yeah. 
never heard that before. That's, I will totally try that. It's like psh, mind blowing, full on, crazy. So watch out for players, she's coming at you. <laughs> time. I wish, I wish I played the horn. Such beautiful pieces. I know, right? And I also use the Tom Hooten practice chart. You can download it on from his website. But and then I can see it's like visible for me, visible collectible data. I can see okay what and I and I check off what I've practiced. I can see what I've neglected over my list of 20 is is basically my practice categories. Yeah. And so and I just try and touch all the things. Yeah. How about you, Amy? Let's see your thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not done yours. Is this, this isn't the, uh, we're only on Clark one. You can't be ready to go yet. But I see the time is, 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 is. is oh, I don't mind. Seriously, yours is much more detailed than mine. Um, well, and again, I just want to say like, it's not, it's not, it just, it just helps me to be a little more organized so that I touch like Barbara Butler says, you got to store all the pots. If you neglect one certain area of your playing because you 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 know, then pretty soon that's kind of going to become a little rusty and kind of like whoa, that's all of a sudden hard, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm, totally. So, yeah. What do you do? Like, um, let's say you had a, a morning rehearsal, dress rehearsal, mm -hmm. and then you go back to the hall for the concert. What mm -hmm. kind of warm up do you do later in the day? Like this well. Very warm up, let's call it. I'm always what? so curious about what people do then. I'm always, I'm listening so hard to people at work to hear what they're doing before the show. Um, yeah. Because they're already warmed up kind of from playing in the day, but you're you're not maybe totally locked in. So what kind of stuff do you do at that point? Can I, can I pull it back? Uh, sure. Before, if we have a dress rehearsal in the morning or a rehearsal in the morning, I'm always up three hours before I have to play. I want to be upright. I want the, I want any swelling to be like draining. I want to be standing up. Mm -hmm. I want to drink a lot of water and I want the swelling to be draining down. You know, I want to get, you know, I want to eat mm -hmm. and take Advil and have the Advil have it time to kick in. Then mm -hmm. I do a small warm up, especially if it's a big, um, if it's a big show, I do a short warm up. I don't do like this is my this is my pandemic practice plan when I have no responsibilities outside of my home. Yeah, <laughs> for the COVID situation, then yeah, yeah, nice yeah. yeah, yeah, it's absolutely not realistic. So it's been fantastic to kind of like cycle through things, you know. Um, but so I, I I'll I won't push myself too hard. I'll try not to get too excited. I'll you know people say Bud Herseth would only warm up to like the note he actually has to play in concert, you know? Hmm. So let's say we go to the dress rehearsal. I try and mm -hmm. I try to stay in control. Sometimes I get carried away in the dress rehearsal and I try to just play easy and healthy and not pushing and, and wasting energy. Then I try to have a good healthy lunch and I always exercise, almost always exercise. Um, the afternoon of a, of a concert because it kind of gets out the, the the willies a bit hmm. some kind of yoga or, or or out for whatever you know whatever it is you do and then i try to have a nap rest sleep encourages a recovery and then whatever dinner and get to the hall and i learned from my former uh, colleague his former second trumpets uh, air group doesn't start to warm up before 7:30 Trust it, because you're too. If you start too early, to if you start at seven and the concert's at eight, you know, just wait till seven thirty, right? And warm up from seven thirty to like quarter to eight, you know, and then you have time to like do whatever while your valves, go to the bathroom, fix your hair, you know, whatever, right? And get on stage and c get used to the temperature on stage, you know, ten to whatever. Yeah, that's what I do. What do you do? No, but what do you, what kind of things do you play in that 15 minutes? Oh. Or does it vary for you? Or do you it have varies. like, you do? No, 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 I'm not, I, no, I don't have, it varies. 
it, it really varies. Usually I find that it's harder to play trumpet in the morning and it's usually easier to play trumpet at night. I wish I was you. My God, it's reversed for me. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm loving these, these recordings we're doing with OSM because we do them in the afternoon. And it's like, man, I feel, my chops feel way better the earlier in the day. Than, than That's later. nice. But oh, um, good. But yeah, but no, but you know, more good for you that you feel good in the evening. It doesn't always work that way. I just, I think it's the nap. I think it's the exercise, getting some blood going, yeah. you know, a heart pumping and blood going. And, and I think it's like, I think it's the nap and the food and the Advil and, you know, mm -hmm. so ice sometimes if it's really bad. Yeah. Um, Amy, Ted yeah. has a question for you. He has a similar question that you're asking Karen. So if you've already done your fundamental routine on your modern horn, but then you want to practice or perform on Baroque trumpet later, do you warm up directly on the Baroque trumpet or play some modern trumpet first? I wanted uh, to know that too. Yeah. Good um, question. Well, I basically I, I always do my basic warm up on my B flat trumpet, like pretty much exclusively. Like, um, but I, if I'm getting really, if I'm, I'm often doing modern stuff alongside Baroque stuff, so um, I'm kind of keeping both balls in the air sometimes but it's it's rare that i'm doing exclusively baroque stuff and not modern stuff so um if i was doing exclusively baroque stuff i think there there's something to be said for sometimes doing just your complete warm up um on the baroque trumpet like why i think i think it's okay to not be too strict about these things and to experiment with them and see what works for you but generally Generally speaking, because I have both balls in the air, I will do my warm up in the morning on the B flat. Um, but then if I come back to it, the instrument later in the day, I won't bother with the B flat at that point. I would just just exclusively be on the on the broke trumpet then. Um, and I gotta say, if you know, just to put in a plug there for playing baroque trumpet, um, there's like no better no better training in how to play the modern trumpet than to become comfortable on the baroque trumpet. In, in how really how you use your air to move between registers. And, you know, um, I think one of the weaknesses I've had in my playing has been to be, uh, to get too overblown, to put out too much air and to have my chops spread a lot. And if you do that on the Baroque trumpet, you can only play principale third trumpet parts. Mm -hmm. um, so really, really kind of, um, you know, teaching yourself a, a really good balance um, of, of lip and air. So I, I highly recommend at least having one that you that you play around with at home, um, even if you don't want to run out and gig, but I swear you will once you start trying it, you're gonna want to go play with other people because it's an amazing instrument. Um, and uh, yeah, and you can go really you know, far with your modern mouthpiece on the Baroque trumpet, you know, if, if, and to start off with, you know, you can, you can, you can get pretty far just with with and and then it's not a huge switch from from uh, from modern to baroque. As uh, as you get more specialized in baroque, you're gonna get into baroque mouthpieces and to get the right exactly the right kind of sound quality. Um, but to get going, just throw your modern mouthpiece in there and see what happens. I I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I I feel like I play. I mean, I play a little baroque trumpet, nothing like you, but yeah. um, it. I found learning the Baroque trumpet uh, instructed my understanding or, or expanded my understanding of what the composers at that time were expecting. Absolutely. Yeah. Like a Beethoven I, symphony and a Haydn symphony. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's why we're, that's why he did that like that in whatever piece, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's really instructed how I interpret Baroque it's performance so, as well. That's a different uh, instrument, really. I mean, although like the way we move our air is very, you know, there's a lot of similarities and everything. It's, um, if you're playing classical music, you should understand what it feels like to play the instrument it was written for. It's just a no brainer for me. Um, you just and even even as far as understanding the 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 harmonic framework that you're playing in, 
And you know, this practice of second trumpet players always dropping the op octave, like that's not always the right idea. You know, there's a time for it, I think. Yeah. Um, that's a much bigger discussion. We're not here to yeah. discuss performance yeah. practice. But anyway, yeah. just spend time uh, understanding the instrument. Yeah. And then you'll understand the music you play. And when you shouldn't take that G down the octave, because it could be down the octave if, you know, it's possible on that instrument. So if it wasn't And the there, composer did not write that. Yeah. The composer did yeah. not write that. Do not do that, you know? Yeah. It's a yeah. fascinating. I love, I love uh, if anybody wants to get into that discussion, I, I, I'm always keen hey, to. Hey, well, let's, let's do that for another, another uh, online event. Let's do Good that idea. topic. Good idea. Yeah. 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 We get some Catherine yeah. Who's in to talk about sack? Exactly. That would be awesome. I, I'm not going to lie. I already sort of had that thought. <laughs> good, good. So good. I'm glad you're setting it up. Good. I'm glad you just volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm back with another question. Excellent. Um, Thank you. Well, from Conrad, he asks, what sort of cooling down or warming up or playing would either of you do between performances on a day where you have two shows many hours apart or even back to back so i guess you're not just doing a rehearsal but you actually have two performances where you have to play full on in in one day <clears throat> like a nutcracker <laughs> i think that's a time when like you said you do a pretty light warm-up like you know you, you minimize your warm-up and yeah, maybe some kind of, uh, you know, I don't do that much warming down. I just kind of feel like warming down is more time on my face. But that being said, I will play like, you know, an extra minute of getting response in the low register, but I don't do any elongated warm down. I think it was Chikowitz who said, who, who, who said that he didn't do warm downs, that it was yeah, just more time on your face. Um, but maybe don't quote him, me on quoting him on that, but I think it was him. Um, but yeah, double shows, like, um, I just try to go into uh, um, to picking out like what matters even, I mean, this is maybe slightly outside of your question, but like even in the context of the show, if you're doing two nutcrackers, there's an awful lot of notes in that nutcracker that are not the most important thing, you know? And um, to really focus on the parts that you gotta nail, you know? The chocolate solo or whatever, you know, like the parts where you're very prominent and other parts you can seriously like, um, you know, it's not as important that you be like intense on every note, you know? There, you can build in, I remember Andrew McCallan was talking to me about that, build rest into the plane, right? So the horn may be on your face, but think of it as rest, you know? Think of that as like your downtime and then um, really pick your moments. And um, frankly, it's probably gonna be like the musical choice if you're not playing a super prominent thing. So you're not actively like, I'm gonna play, I'm really gonna be in it here. Like you're just chill. It's probably gonna sort of lighten and put your sound more in the background. It's gonna- Totally, yeah. Yeah. But what do you do, Karen? What's your um, double show? Um, yeah. Well, I think when you have a heavy run like that, whatever it is, if you all of a sudden have two shows, I think the key to success in that situation is the preparation and of the weeks leading up to it. Uh, it, it, it it's where we get kind of get into trouble when we think, oh, yeah, it's going to be fine. Or, you know, if I if I if I know it's going to be a heavy weekend, I'm the weeks leading up, I'm adding on. I'm, you know, it's that's the thing I find juggling with having a job is, is, and I, I say to my students all the time, like, I'm basically managing what level of fatigue I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm basically operating on, okay, how tired is are my chops right now? Mm -hmm. And how can I be smart about getting through this next week or three days or four days or whatever, and then switching to the pop show or, I, I, you know, how, you know. So it, it, the, the, for me anyways, I'm not the type of player who can just like sit down and play anything and play everything. I, I practice. 
I prepare and I, I set myself up as much as I can for, for success in those situations. So when I'm, when the week comes, when we're doing like a, a ballet run or whatever, like for example, Nutcracker or whatever, then yeah, in between, I'm going to try and have, if even if it's 20 minutes and I go lie down in my car and just rest and quiet in my car and quiet and calm breathing, that is so helpful for me and recovery. I'm not like, expending energy being social and, and being out i'm not doing ten thousand errands in between because I, I i have to save my energy for the show that night you know mm -hmm. i just give myself like i'm they pay me to do my best on the job so i take it seriously i i when it's go time i I'm, i try to make sure i'm i'm really in giving my best in the moment that i can so I, that comes with a sacrifice that comes with like, yeah, it would be super convenient for me to go do some shopping right now. But you know what, then I'm going to be tired. Just even from the sensory input from the mall or people or, you know, I, and it's better to, for me to have quiet and be calm. And like I said, I, if, the, if it's an afternoon show, I'm going to drink a lot of water in the two hours after that and then kind of taper it down as I get closer to the show, because obviously, you know, I don't want to have, have full bladder having to play trumpet in the pit. So you can figure out what I'm saying. <laughs> you know. Um, but this, it's, it helps. Anyway. Yeah. There's a question from Victoria about um, practicing during COVID and when you have more time and flexibility in your schedule, as we all do right now, how does has that changed your routine and what does that look like? Do you take more breaks? Have you kept it sort of more structured the way it was before? Um, basically, like, how do they look different? How do your practice sessions and routines look different in these days than they, they did before? Amy? My practice sessions take place on the banjo mostly. <laughs> The biggest difference is I practice the banjo now. Um, I'm kind of kidding, not kidding. I really do mostly practice banjo these days, which has been awesome, but I'm really not here to, you guys don't wanna hear about banjo. Um, of course, we all have so much more time now. So it's, it's a great opportunity to kind of hone in on the things you've always wanted to become good at, whether that's a totally different instrument or you know, on the instrument that you've been focusing on, the trumpet. But so to be fair, Amy, not to interrupt, but you have been very busy. The MSO has been very active recording, live streaming. So you it's not like you've been sitting at home for weeks and months on end not playing with other people. You're actually working. That's true. And I, I recognize that that yeah, like so that's I mean, it's that's yeah. right. That's why you 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 it's good. It's been good that you've had this extra time and and mm -hmm. to, to be able to learn the banjo yeah thank you yeah it's great oh, it is great and you know actually i'll say one thing about the crossover that i found is you know i i spend so much time on the trumpet thinking about shaping the note shaping the phrase and like you have the note start getting the note started and then doing something with it you know and with the banjo it's like you hit the string and it's it you're done it's like it's so sweet. You don't have to keep the sound going, you know? I mean, you, you just keep hitting other strings. That's been, so when I play the trumpet, I'm trying to think of like, it's like you hit a string, you get it going, and then just kind of trust it and enjoy it. Like, you know, I'm trying not to to, to overthink it so much. That's been that's been a kind of a nice uh, nice realization. Um, but in terms of my, tr my trumpet routine, um, uh, it's just, we just obviously because our chops aren't as tired, we have a lot more time to um, to practice or to to get into stuff. But at the same time, maybe it's a bit hard to be motivated because you don't have as many concerts. I know I'm certainly most motivated when I have an OSM concert coming up to to be learning some new repertoire or or you know getting back on the rotary trumpet or something like that. Um, but uh, what about you, Karen? Do you want to comment on how it's changed your practice routine? Um, well, it's funny. I, when this whole thing started, it's, it's, it, I, I kind of was like, oh, you know, all, the, all of a sudden we have this time off. What a, and I, I didn't get upset about it. Um, 
because I, of course, thought it was really going to be a short term thing. I was like, what an opportunity. And I like literally the next day I launched into like really like doing some self-reflection and thinking, okay, I, this is a gift here. This is like my mini sabbatical. I've got like a month or something. And what, what do I, what do I have in my playing that's bugging me that I, I want to kind of work through that I don't normally have time to work through. And that's yeah, how I started. Beginning of the pandemic for me too. I was looking back at like videos that I'd taken. And it's like, I was just exploding with practice inspiration at the beginning of the pandemic. I was just like, so into exactly what you say. Like, Oh, the opportunity to just yeah focus in on stuff and yeah. have chops and like yeah 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 so I, i've been trying i've been trying all sorts of other people's routines like i've been trying other new books i like i said I, like this i've been getting deeper into the stamp more and more and I, I, all all the things i bring out some i mean this is like i don't know so yeah i I, I definitely find that I'm, I, I always do sort of the fundamental basic routine, cycling through various exercises. Some days I'm like, oh, I'm going to take this Schlossberg out and I'm going to do that as my scale pattern. Oh, I'm going to take this colon out or this, you know, irons. And that's going to be my flexibility pattern for the next 10 minutes, you know, that I'm going to, you know, and I just sort of cycle through the books that I already have. But the other thing I've, I'm doing is I put what solos have I wanted to learn and never had time to learn what etudes have I not learned like so 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 many it's crazy and of course we have all these amazing guys people recording videos of fabulous etudes every day uploading them Jim Wilt from LA Chris Smith in, in, in San Diego it's, it's like absolutely phenomenal to have this resource now like it's wonderful. So I, I, I usually start my day uh, listening to something beautiful, some incredible player online to sort of inspire me, you know. And but uh, but yeah, this so the second session is more geared towards etudes or solos, um, and third session if I if I do one, I don't always do one, you know, when there's no threat of going back to work, of having to like have super, super chops. I, I, I I'll very often only do two sessions, but you know, we're going back to work soon. So I, I got a lot of notes to learn. So now I'm back to three sessions. Where are we? Oh, it's cool. three o'clock. Oh yeah. Maybe that's... Turn into pumpkin. Maybe, yeah, maybe... So covered everything what about your pdf we didn't even look at it well i think that we're gonna have those posted on the, at the website yeah we're gonna absolutely. have all the all th all three pdfs so karen's list and the bits of the uh from the warm-up routines that you use and also amy's and we'll have that on the website perfect and if anybody sees them and has any questions like feel free to send an email and and we'll Write you back. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do it that way. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Thank you, Karen, for sharing your wisdom. Thank you, Amy, for sharing your wisdom. Thanks to both of you. Thank you, I Louise, for being the moderator. I can't That's wait awesome. till we can um, play together in the same room. I was thinking, actually, you know, in this process, it's so crazy that we're not hearing other people like I've been learning banjo online and and I've never even taken a lesson in the same room as somebody yet like what a world we live in you know it's wild yeah that's like crazy but you know sound quality is so good these days and anyway I'm glad so that we can connect like this yeah. and um, I look forward to to seeing what other ideas people put forward and and within you know our group what we come up with of other topics that we can discuss um, I hope this has been helpful for somebody out there. It's been helpful for me, so that's good. I always love talking trumpet with you, Amy. I know we could we hang up with these guys and we can keep going. <laughs> you great. Can tell your real secrets. Yeah, the, I don't. The, the trick, I don't have any. <laughs> this button and 
fireworks. Okay, cool. Um, let's call it a day then. But actually, no, we're not calling it a day because there's the next session about mental yeah, health. Yeah, he healthy headspace. Healthy headspace. Strategies on uh, strategies on dealing with stress. And uh, just some uh, myself and two other uh, musicians, Jesse Brooks and, and Jen Steven, we will talk about strategies that we use. Just really concrete, uh, really down to earth uh, ideas. Starts in uh, in half an hour, three thirty. Awesome. I can't wait to okay. hear it. Thank, thank, you thank you so much, you. Amy. Okay. Take care. Bye now.